Yeah, what's going on? October 24th, I'm going to be in Fairview Heights, Illinois. Comedian Alfred Kainga, Fairview Heights, Illinois, October 24th. Uh, with my boy, the very funny Willie Lynch. He's going to be hosting me over there at his comedy club in Fairview Heights. Some of you in, in the area might know where it is. I don't know where it is. This is going to be my first time going to Fairview Heights. So I had to ask Willie. I said, uh, wh where exactly is it close to? And, and, and the man said, uh, Fairview Heights. But really, it's on the border of uh, Illinois and, and Missouri. So the closest metroplex in Missouri would be St. Louis. So everybody in the St. Louis area, Different, you know, St. Louis Metroplex. If you're close to Fairview Heights, come come check out your boy. October 24th, I'm going to be out there. Uh, we're going to be doing our thing, man. It's going to be a great, great show. I'm just giving you October because this is an October podcast. Yeah, we back at it. Comedian Alfred Kanga. Thank you for checking in. Um, all right, let's see, one, two, one, two, hey, uh, you know, a friend of mine was, you know, a couple of my friends have really been hitting hard on me about, you know, staying consistent, you know, and, um, you know, doing this, because I said I was going to do the podcast a once a month, I said I was going to do the podcast once a week, and I'm telling you, procrastination is the assassination of a good attitude, man, because I know deep down in my heart, I want to do this, but I, I just been like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll get to it, um, I got so much things going on, sometimes you create busy that ain't even there, you just conjure up. A whole bunch of things that you, you're doing. When you're really doing absolutely nothing. All you got to do is prioritize. You know, and that's what I've been trying to get myself to get to. Prioritizing this thing right here. I love sitting in front of, 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 of you guys. I love coming and talking to my people, you know. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. And people are holding me to task. And they say, you got to do this every week. You got to do it. So I'm like, all right, then. I'm on it. Um... I got a very interesting question today. A good friend of mine, he called me. He said, Alfred, let me ask you something. Since you are from Africa and you know about, you know, animals, you know, <laughs> which I take pride myself into admitting. Yes, I do know a lot about animals. Uh, he said, how do you know the difference between a bull and a cow? And, you know, sometimes when I get questions like this from our Americans, I'm, I'll be thinking maybe they're being facetious, you know, just being silly. But he really meant it. He, he doesn't know the difference between a bull and a cow, you know. And I started thinking about it because I recently, I watched a movie called The Barnyard. And I remember watching this movie thinking to myself, why do they have cows that sound like bulls? You know what I mean? Because the cows... Got the whole cow, you know, the titties, the cow titties on the bottom, you know, where the baby cows can can crouch down under their legs, under their belly, and, and suckle upon, you know. And normally, you know, it'd be a big ball of, of, of titty with about four or five nipples. I don't know exactly how many nipples there are. I, mean, I need to check that out. How many nipples um, are on a cow's titty? Let me see, because we need to be sure, right? We need to make sure um, we're giving people the correct answer here so that we can get this this this, this clarified. So, uh, you know, the correct way to say it is a cow's udder typically has four titties, well, four nipples, okay? That's a cow, because... And the next thing that he asked me was, so do both cows and, 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 and bulls have horns? Because he thought the identifying factor between a cow and a bull, the difference was that cows don't have horns and bulls do. No, 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 no. Cows have horns too, and so do bulls, right? Now, there's some breeds that don't have horns, right? Uh, we ain't going to get into the whole, you know, all the specifics. But the ones, the one thing that's going to help you identify which one is a cow and which one is a bull is right there on the bottom. Now, the bulls, they don't have titties. The bulls, they don't have an udder. They don't have a breast. The bulls have 
They got the bull ball, you know, like the big ball, bulging ball. You know, it looks like a it looks like a man's balls, if but but bigger and and you know they look you know menacing. And uh, obviously the bull comes with the penis, which doesn't come out all the time, thank goodness. But it kind of you know goes back in the in 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 the penis sack. And it just kind of hides in there until the bull is excited and ready to go do its thing. And, and when you know, I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting so deep into this. But I felt like I needed to explain it to the rest of the world too. Those who don't know the difference between a bull and, and, and a cow. And it just led me to, to understand that, man, there's a lot of confusion in the world now. Because, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cows out there that are, that are acting like bulls, you know, and there's a lot of bulls that are really acting like, like cows. So a lot of confusion. I can understand where people now need clarification because yeah, if a cow can have horns, then now people are thinking, man, that might just be a bull, but no, it's really not because when you, when you peel the layer off, you know, you, you're going to be shell shocked and find out, well, I thought I had got me a bull, but I really just have a cow covering up, acting like a bull, but it really, really ain't. Uh, that's just the way that things are now. So we got to be very careful with what's going on out in the world. Gets me scared, but um, it gives me pleasure that I can, I can explain these things to people and hopefully bring clarification to those who might be confused uh today's friday uh beautiful day having a good time i had a show last night in fort worth texas uh absolutely killed it. the audience was great um and um while we were doing the show you know uh one one audience member asked another comedian you know who who you were voting for you know and and uh, these these are really scary times right for people but i just think it's just scare tactics People get scared every four years when we get ready for election. Now, I don't care where you are in the world. I've had the privilege of living in Africa and living here in America. And I've noticed it's the same thing, no matter where you are, when it comes to election time. Uh, people get riled up. You know, the division starts. It ain't, you know, whether it's you're Democrat or Republican or you're this ruling party or that other opposition party. Uh... For four years, everybody's living in harmony. Everybody's having a good time. We're enjoying ourselves. We're trying to survive. People are just trying to live. Then all of a sudden, come election year, now I hate you. I can't stand you. Your, your, your opinions are whack to me. How can you like this party? How can you like this person? Have you not seen what, they, what they're doing or what they've said? Uh, now, you know, neighbors who were cool with each other, all of a sudden, they can't stand each other, you know? Uh, now you're waking up and you got a big banner on your neighbor's yard, you know, with, with all the different candidates that they're going to vote for. And the media is putting people against each other. And it, it's, it's just, it just creates a weird vibe. But... You know, I don't understand how the world is not hip to that yet. Like, look, it happens every four years. It happens every election season. Then as soon as the elections are over, everybody's cool. Everybody is, is, is calm. Now we go back to watching our sports, watching our football, going to the park, having a good time, getting back to living. That lets, just lets you know that the agenda is always about pinning people against each other. When, when it's not even necessary like that, you know. I've seen it even in, in my country, man. And then you, in Zimbabwe, and then you see after the election, the people are having a good time. The politicians are actually having lunch together. Like, damn, man, people were kicking each other's ass yesterday for you two. But now y'all just chilling, y'all having a good time together. Let's you know that, you know, the, the elitists, who tries to control the minds and they for for the greater part they succeed because you know they get people to be mad at each other and while they're living their lives while they're doing multi-billion dollar businesses behind closed doors 
So I, at 43 years old, have never voted in my life. Yeah, that might shock people, but I've never voted. I've never been in a, in, in a booth to vote for whatever party, whether it was where I grew up. Of course, when I left Zimbabwe, yeah, I could have voted because I left what at 19 years old. I, I could have been able to vote at the age of 18, but I never did. Uh, and now that I've lived in America all these years, man, I've never voted, you know, just because I see what it is for, you know, what, what, it's, what it is about. You know, it's just about pinning people against each other, man. And, and you know, you start hating your neighbor, you know, because they're, they're of this race or they're that, you know, religion. But then after that, you know, everybody's cool. We're back together. Kumbaya again. Why can't we just be kumbaya all the way through? You know, uh, it, it just lets you know that these guys up top, the guys who rule the world, they know what they're doing. They know what they're up against. They're up against the masses. If, if we only knew that the masses are the most powerful force on earth, God-given power, then we would be able to come together regardless of, you know, cr race, color, creed, you name it, you know, but they don't want that. So, you know, they tell the next person, yo, you vote for these people, they're going to mess you up. You know, they're going to mess your race up. You vote for these people right here, they ain't never going to uplift you. You know, they're going to keep you down. They're going to keep you on welfare, pinning people against each other. But it's time for the masses to wake up, man, and, and see this thing for what it is. So I, I watch on the Internet people going back and forth yelling, but yo, you want to vote for who? Kiss my eyes. Don't ever come to my house. And this is just mother and daughter. Scary things, man. So it's just one of those things where, you know, we just gotta, we just gotta watch out, man. Just be careful of what's going on out there in the world. Um. So yeah, that's that's my um lesson today for those who wanted to know about the. The cow and the pig and and, 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 and the bull, I might say. Um, this this episode was really supposed to be talking about man's mental health. I'm really concerned about my brothers out there, man. All the men in the world are going through things. But now we've we, we veered off and, you know, I got a call from my friend. He's asking me, you know, things that are just throwing me off topic. But I'm glad we addressed it. Hopefully that might have brought clarity for, for one or two people. But, you know, to the, to the brothers out there, to the man, you know, uh, keep your head up, fellas. Things are rough in this world. And as a man, we were given the mandate to take care of our families, to take care of our households. As much as it gets heavy sometimes, you got to be able to stay strong. And sometimes no one can encourage you. But I'm here to tell you, brothers... Keep fighting the good fight. We appreciate you as brothers to another brother, from one brother to another. Be appreciated. Your children appreciate it. And if you're not in your children's life, I'm here to say today, right now, man, get your, get up off your ass and take care of your kids. You know, I got this one thing where I get really, really irritated when I find out that, you know, there are some men out there who will, who will not take care of their children just because... They, they're no longer together with the mother. Absolutely stupid to me that you refuse the, the, the privilege of your child to, to have a parent, to have both parents in this child's life because you're bitter at the woman. Yeah, I know there's some women who will make it hard for you to be in your child's life. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the ones who are willing to let you be in your child's life, willing to let you pick up your kid when you're supposed to or whenever you want to, but you absolutely refuse because this woman dumped you because you can't be with this woman. So now you're mad as hell at the child. You say, no, I, I, you know, F the kid just because the mama don't want me. You go over there to pick up your daughter, and because the mama ain't giving you no ass no more, you mad. You can't see your son. You can't see your daughter. Absolutely horrible. Fellas, if you're that type of person that I'm talking to right now today, forget the good ones who are trying to go get their kids and, 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 the, and the mother is, 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 is being a, a pain in the ass. We're going we gonna to talk about those. But today, I'm talking about every man out there. You got a child. You're not in the same household with this child, man. Step up and be a man because you just have no idea how big of a difference that 
really, really makes for the child, man. I'm telling you right now, I got a six-year-old daughter. Great relationship with her mom, who is my ex-wife. A uh, great relationship, you know, that we, you know, we have co-parenting our child. My daughter knows that I'm there for my baby every single time. If she picks up the phone, I'm there. If she, if she wants to see me, I'm there. You know, I work a lot. I travel a lot. But I make sure I, I surprise her. I go to school. And uh, I'll drop, you know, I'll go to school and, and, and just say, hey, I'm here to have lunch with my daughter. Set schedule. They love that. She loves that. She brightens up as soon as she sees me walk through that cafeteria. You know, the weekends that we spend together, we do all kinds of activities. She gets to talk to me. She gets to let me know what she's thinking. She gets to bond with her father. And I can see the growth in this child just because both parents are super active in this child's life. I could easily say, yeah, well, you know, I'm busy. I don't want to be a part of this baby. No, absolutely not. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to be that parent who's going to be there, make sure that, you know, I take my little daughter to dates. You know, we go to movie nights. We go to real dress-up dates. So that way, any funky-ass dude who's going to try to come and try to woo her with some bullshit, she's going to be hip to it. She's going to be like, look, man, my daddy used to fly me out to Disney all the time. I've been to Vegas on a plane. What, what are you trying to sell me? $40 at Super 6 Motel is not going to fly. Fellas, this is what I'm trying to teach you right now, man. If you neglect your responsibility as a father, another nigga going to come over, another dude going to come over and sell your child on some bullshit, on some stupid, stupid things that is just going to leave them messed up. You know, the only reason why these strip clubs are full, the only reason why these brothels are thriving with business is because daddy's love was missing, man. Daddy's love is important. Daddy's love is very important. You know how powerful daddy's love is? Sometimes, you know, I even get a call from my, my, my ex and, and, and she'd be like, yo, listen, I need you to talk to your daughter. She acting up. And the moment she hears that mom is calling me, she starts to straighten up, man. Even if I'm 5,000 miles away doing a show somewhere out there. You got to do that. You got to step up. You know, that way they feel like even though we're not together in the same household, when they grow up, she's going to be like, you know what? It, it didn't even feel like it was a separate household. It just felt like we were all together in one house because you were there. When, when you were needed, you were there. It, it doesn't replace the fact that, you know, that I'm not, you know, we're not in the same household. That's tough. That's another subject. But being present, no matter what, most important, y'all. So... Take it for what it's worth. I know. Comment. Leave a comment. Let me know how you feel. Let me let me find out. You know some of your parenting skills for those who are not married, those who have children outside of their you know their households. How are you handling it? You know what's what are some of the challenges that you face? Let's talk about it as men, fellas. I'm here for you. Uh, yeah, you thought this podcast was just going to be about the funny, huh? Well, it is the funny, the serious, and the stupid. So we're going to be talking about it all. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I'm back in here. As you can see, I, I done set up my little my little setup. And if you follow my, my YouTube page, you're going to see I'm doing everything, man. I'm doing your stand-up. I'm going to give you stand-up videos. I'm giving you podcasts. Uh, I'm also giving you music because I'm doing it all. You see my equipment there. But uh, it's been a beautiful, beautiful conversation that uh, that we've had today. And I uh, look forward to seeing you. If I'm in the city near you, I'll be giving you my November and December schedule on the next episodes. But Fairview Heights, Illinois, St. Louis, Missouri, I'm there October 24th. Be there because I'm going to be there. God bless. Good night.